Get what are you off. doing? You crazy, you're breaking my arm! Shut up, I will. What is this? Get Ryan. What are you doing? To get Ryan. You don't have to. What's going on here, Mike? Well, this man over done. My friend here looked at a package on my lady's table. I thought you might like a talk to him. Who are you? My name's Ryan. I'm the security officer for the hotel. Well, I'm a guest in this hotel. I demand you arrest this man. The man says that you stole something from a lady. Well, this man is obviously insane if you don't do something about it. talks too much. A package is inside his coat. You mind showing us what's inside of your coat? Of course I do. There's no reason to... There it is. If you take that, I'm going to hold you and the hotel responsible for it. You sure is this, Mike? Positive. If that's his package, maybe you can describe what's in it. Of course I can. The diamond bracelet with a broken catch. I'm taking it to be repaired. Sure, yeah. Open it up. I don't know, Mike. I'm a patient man, and I'm warning you for the last time. If you open that, I'm going to sue you and the whole... Open it up. Come on. Well, look, Mike, I... Open it up! Look, I try and take it. Well? A diamond bracelet with a broken clasp. <laughs> downstairs said that I was wanted in Mr. Ryan's office. Hi, Mr. Ryan. Won't you come in and sit down, please? Yes, thank you very much. I, I'm Mrs. Green, Mrs. James Green. I'm afraid I really don't know what this is all about. Mrs. Green, we'll try not to detain you any longer than is necessary. Do you recognize this? Well, yes, of course. It's my bracelet. When you left the table downstairs, this man... Mrs. Green, a ridiculous mistake has been made. These men are accusing me of stealing your bracelet. Oh, but that's absurd. Mr. Lewis was just taking it to have the catch fixed. As you can see, it's broken. Oh, just a minute. Do keep out of this, Mike. Mr. Lewis, there has obviously been a mistake made. Now, as I explained to you before, Mike Hammer is a private detective with no official status in this hotel. But you have, Mr. Ryan. And you accuse me of being a thief. Oh, there's been a mistake, Brad. You've made it a very costly one. But, Mr. Lewis, my bracelet... I think you'd better send it to my office, Mrs. Green. Under the circumstances, I'd rather not take it. Oh, sir, I, I'm sure it was just a mistake. It was a mistake. And I made it by listening to you, Mike. The biggest mistake you made is letting that character walk out of here. Something's phony around here. Now, it. don't make it any worse than it is. It was a mistake. Let it lay that way. Mrs. Green, if there's anything that we can possibly do... You gentlemen will just have to excuse me. My, my guest is waiting for me in the lobby. This has been very embarrassing. Well, you can understand our position. After all, the hotel yes, was merely... Of course. It, it, it was just a mistake, I'm sure. When you make a mistake, Mike, you really make a king-size one, don't you? Mistake nothing. Look, something stinks around here, Ryan. I can smell it. Can't you see that? I can see that the hotel is facing a lawsuit. You gonna stand still for this? You bet I'm gonna stand still, and I'm gonna hope real hard that it blows over. Yeah, well, not me. I'm going to find out about this character, Lewis. I'm going to find out all about it. And when I do, I'm going to take him apart like a four-bit watch. With Pat Chambers' help, I went through the police files. There was nothing on either Lewis or Mrs. Green. The next best source of information were the newspapers. Every newspaper has a morgue. This is the final resting place for dead speeches, forgotten celebrities, lost reputations, and buried crimes. The Daily News in New York has one of the most complete. But it was a dry run. I knew I'd been had. What I had to find out was why. You should have seen Lewis's face, Lucille. He was livid. Yes, I can imagine. The culture room girl said your friend wasn't very gentle with him. But he's not my friend. I never saw him before. If they should think that I had I him there... Oh, I know. They're liable to get a little unpleasant. But it just isn't fair. I did everything they asked me to do. I had the break with right, them. Getting excited won't help anything, Margaret. Yes? This is Mike Hammer, Mrs. Green. I'd like to talk to you tonight, if possible. Mike Hammer? Well, you're the detective I met today. That's right. Yeah, I, I won't take up too much of your time. Well, I... I, I, I don't know, Mr. Hammer. It, it, it might be... Well, it's very important. Well, I, I, I guess it'll be all right. Thank you. I should be there in about an hour. The detective, he's coming out here. 
Mike Hammerst? Yeah. No wonder Lewis had such a bad time at the hotel. Mr. Hammer has quite a reputation. Uh, I, I just didn't know what to say. Well, suppose they find out. Won't that make them absolutely certain I had him at the hotel to break up the payoff? Well, what have you got to lose? They think that already. You may have a lot to gain. What do you mean? Well, Mr. Hammer may be able to handle them for you. Permanently. It took me longer to get away from the office than I figured. I still had a few lines out on Lewis, but I kept coming up with no fish. My only hope was that I could persuade Mrs. Green to do some leveling. She had plenty of time to think while I was bucking the traffic out to Long Island. What were you doing in my room? I was waiting for you, Mrs. Green. But how did you get in there? On the balcony. I should have thought you'd been expecting me after what happened this afternoon. Oh, but that, that wasn't my fault. I didn't want it to happen that way. very embarrassing, you? Mrs. Green. Very embarrassing. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Really, I am. L look, I, I have the bracelet right here. I can get it. We don't want any part of the bracelet, Mrs. Green. You've managed to complicate things pretty thoroughly. Oh, but I, I, I didn't. I, I did everything I was told to do. I... Like calling Hammer? No, I, I didn't do that. I swear to you, he just happened to be there. Like he's going to just happen to be here tonight. But how do you know about that? Now, you underestimate us, Mrs. Crane. We've been forced to watch you very carefully. You've caused us an awful lot of trouble. We're going to have to make sure you don't cause us any more. Oh, I, I won't. I swear I won't. We have to make sure. Oh, no, don't, please. Nothing personal, Mrs. Green. This is just an object lesson. Oh. Are you my camera? That's right. Mrs. Green's expecting me. Oh, thank heavens. I, something awful has happened. She, she had an accident. She fell down the stairs. Oh, I won't do you any good to go up. The doctor just left. She's under sedation. Who are you? What do you fit into this? I'm Lucille Hart. I'm a friend of Margaret's. Lucille Hart. I was in the library, and she went upstairs to freshen up, expecting you. And I, I heard her scream, so I rushed out, and here she was at the foot of the stairs. Was there anybody else in the house? Just the maid. She's up with Margaret now. And I don't suppose that uh, she saw anything either, did no, she? No, she's in the kitchen. Uh-huh. Why, well, you don't think it was an accident? Well, uh, Miss Hart, is she in the habit of falling downstairs? Well, but why would anybody want to hurt her? Somebody's taking out insurance. She's not going to talk to anybody. Me or anybody. Hey, you were at the hotel this afternoon. I saw you there. Yes. Well, then why don't you tell me what this is all about, huh? I do, will you help me? Well, that all depends. Not here. I can't talk here. Why not? May I drive back to town with you? What about Mrs. Green? Oh, she'll be all right. There's nothing I can do for her now. How soon can you be ready? I'll just get my things. You know, we really have no right to drag you into this mess. Well, you don't want a few bumps and bruises, Bobby. It's all part of the business that'll show up on the bill. Yeah, I know. You know, nobody invited me into this. I invited myself in. This afternoon, somebody tried to put a dent in my ego. Tonight, somebody tried to put a dent in my head. Maybe the same guy. 
Because you want to meet this fellow one more time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm glad you're on my side. Yeah, now about this little talk. Huh? Let's start talking. Well, what happened to Margaret Green tonight may very well happen to me next. Yeah, why? I got myself into something over my head, and I, I, I just had no one to turn to until now. What about your husband? Well, my husband is Edward Hart. He travels a lot. When he is home, we're like strangers. We've never really known each other. Yeah, but you married him, didn't you? Yes. With all his faults, Edward has one trait that I've always admired in men. He's rich. I told you, Mike, I was going to be completely honest with you. Well, honey, if you're not, you're just wasting your time. Well, about, oh, about a year or so ago, I got bored. So I started playing, playing cards and taking a flyer on the races, and I lost more than I could pay. So I covered my losses with IOUs, but I, I just didn't dare tell my husband. So I started plunging to win back, and well, I got in that much deeper, of course. Who holds the paper? Carl Reuter, do you know him? Reuter? No, only what I read in the society columns. He makes his living playing cards, and he usually wins. One night when I was really hooked, he said he had to have the money I owed him. Well, I told him I couldn't raise that much, and he suggested I ask my husband for the money. The implication was that if I didn't, he would. I just couldn't let him do that. Reuter knew that my jewels were insured, so he suggested that I fake a robbery and collect the insurance. And that way, my husband would never find out. So, so your husband would collect from the insurance company, and Reuter would take the jewels in full payment, huh? Yes. Uh-huh. Let me ask you something. Is this Mrs. Green in the same fix? Yes, exactly. So that's what the deal was at the hotel this afternoon, huh? Payoff. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, why the big production? Why not just hand Reuter the jewels? Well, it had to look good. Now, if you hadn't interfered, when we got back to the table, Margaret would have screamed that she'd been robbed and I'd have been a witness. Did she get specific instructions to break this class? Yes. Yeah. Well, they figure everything out, don't they? If anything goes wrong, they're just taking the jewels to get fixed, yeah? Boy, are they smart. We'll fix their little red wagon. Oh, no, that's not the whole story, Mike. Huh? With the jewels, you have to give Reuter a letter saying that the jewels are payment for the debt. Oh, come on now, honey. You didn't go for that, did you? Now you know why I need your help. Once he gets that letter, he never leaves you alone. Well, did you try to buy it back? Oh, I've tried. I offered him anything. Anything. So, when... When Margaret told me how you handled Lewis at the hotel this afternoon, I, I don't know, I just had the feeling that you'd be the one to get that letter back for me. At the right price, of course. Well, what's the right price? Honey, you'd think you were asking me to kill a guy. lived in a modernistic pile of concrete and plate glass overlooking the East River on Sutton Place. He had penthouse B. Hey, Reuter. Yes, who are you? you? Mutual friend. Now, wait a minute. You can't you come barking in here. You got something that belongs to a client of mine. I came to pick it up. What are you talking about? Who are you, anyway? My name's Hammer, Mike Hammer. And your client? A woman who wrote you a letter, a very indiscreet letter. Uh, now, do we understand each other? Suppose there was such a letter. Why should I give it to you? Because she's paid for it a half a dozen times over. <laughs> You're being ridiculous. If I have something belonging to a client of yours, why don't you take me to court? Take me to the police. Oh, she can't go to the police. That letter says she was using her jewels to pay off a debt to you. Those jewels were later reported stolen. 
Well, in that case, your client's in no position to do me any harm, is she? Legally, no. That's why she came to me. You? What can you do? you to give her back some property. Now, you meet Diaz two pieces the day you were born by the time you see it my way, but you will see it my way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. My client can't go to the police, but then neither can you, Roy. Really. That's right. No matter what I do to you, you can't go to the police. <laughs> you know, I hate men who live off women. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a real pleasure convincing you any trouble is, I don't think you're going to hold out long enough to make it worth my while. No, no. Uh, uh, uh. Who's... What are you talking about? I figured there would be more than one. Just to be on the safe side, I'll take them all. All right. I don't, I don't have them here. How soon can you get them here? By the night, I guess. All right, you have them in my office by midnight. That's my office by midnight. You know, Ryder, this was a social call. I was on my best behavior. If you don't get those letters in my office by midnight, the next call won't be so social. Yeah? I think I have to do a scare into him. Did you though. get the evidence? No, not yet, but we will. Well, if you give him time to think, he may try to no, get honey, away. Donnie, the more time that he has to think, the less stomach he's going to have for getting roughed up. I told him to have the evidence in my office by midnight. He won't come. No, right? I don't expect he will. I think he'll run for cover. Oh, I see. And then when he does, we search his apartment? Mm, no, no. What, what for? You see, when a man runs, honey, he takes his most precious possession with him. Reuter will bring the evidence. Oh, if he only does. He will. I was on my third cigarette and Lucille Hart was on her fourth when my hunch finally paid off. The man from the hotel was with him. And from the amount of baggage they were carrying, they weren't going to the corner for a newspaper. Mike, it's Reuter. He's got Lewis with him. I got far enough behind them so they couldn't spot me close enough so they couldn't lose me. In the 50s, they swung east off First Avenue and pulled up in front of an old brownstone. We were only a few car lengths behind. my baby. Now, you take the car back to your place and wait. Mike, be careful. There are two of them. You let me worry about that, huh? Hey, take the car back to your place. When I get there, I'll have a present for you. I can't tell you how grateful I'll be. <laughs> I got a pretty good idea, Chickie. I kept the building under surveillance. I had it figured that if they were holed up there for any length of time, one of them would have to go out for supply. I'd almost made up my mind to go against the two of them when Lewis walked out. That meant Reuter was in there alone with only the evidence I wanted to keep him company. The janitor didn't believe the new tenant was an old friend of mine and that I'd mislaid his apartment number. But an engraving of George Washington convinced him. He pointed out the door and said he hoped there wouldn't be any trouble. I reassured him. Taking the evidence away from Reuter wouldn't be any trouble. It would be a pleasure. I 
nose, you creep. You were bound to get into trouble if you kept sticking your nose into other people's business. Get your hands up on the back of your neck where I can see you. Move! Hey. He hadn't been there long enough to find a permanent hiding place. That briefcase had to be someplace close by. send half a dozen highly respected matrons to jail, or enough to feather Reuter's nest for life, depending on who had the material. Open up, me Lord. Remember me? at your place. I got worried with two of them. Look, you better get out of here. Somebody's going to be calling the police. What about the letters? I got yours and all the rest. Now, come on. Uh, hadn't, I, hadn't I better take them back to my place night before the police get here? Yeah, you're right. Come on. All right, it's all in here. Now, I'll take them back to your place. I'll meet you there. You're a bigger sucker than I was, Hammer. You think I'm trying to shake her down? She was my partner. No, oh, no, Mike. Just a minute, baby. I think I'd better hang on to that briefcase. No. I'm not giving it up, Mike. Not with this gold mine in here. Oh, honey, don't do it. I'm warning you, Mike. I'll shoot. Give me the case. Get an ambulance. Oh, only it's too late, Mike. Oh, Mike, I had it all figured out. With those letters, I didn't need Reuter anymore. It could have been mine. There was plenty for both of us, Mike. No, baby. It just looked that way. In a deal like this, the payoff is always grief. for a shroud. <laughs> 